Now, you know, all of these years, some of us who grew up in the South, we would sing in church and get happy about swing low, sweet chariot, coming for to carry me home. Well, today, at my hotel, there was a long white chariot. <laughs> parked in front of the hotel and everybody was looking wondering what this long white chariot was doing in front of the hotel and lo and behold that long white chariot was there to carry me over to the mansion of the Reverend Dr. Johnny Colvin. where Mother Parker had prepared a fabulous feast for us. <laughs> I said, Lord, I'm so glad that I've learned that we don't have to die to ride in a long Cadillac. <laughs> When I was a little kid growing up in the South, we always called limousines funeral cars. <laughs> because that was about the only time the colored folks got a chance <laughs> to ride in anything that long unless it was a mule train. <laughs> and you know, the topic of the lesson tonight is the beauty of prosperity. And when I looked out and I saw that long white chariot, I said, this is a part of the beauty of prosperity. Some of you probably saw the Phil Donahue show the other morning. And I want to thank those of you from this congregation who came and just blessed me and supported me so much. Of course, you know, I have an advantage over them. I know where they're coming from. <laughs> they don't know where I'm coming from, but they find out pretty fast. So many times, as I and Reverend Coleman were discussing the other day, so many people wonder, and I'm sure they ask her, you know, about that long white chariot. Well, why do you have to have a car like that? And they want to know, why do I have to have all of those Rolls Royces? <laughs> and so I told Reverend Coleman, I said, well, you know, those of us who teach prosperity, we cannot afford to talk in the path and walk in the grass. <laughs> I mean, what right would we have to come here and teach you prosperity if we were not prospering ourselves? <laughs> so when you look outside and you see your minister's chariot, that shows you that the stuff is working. <laughs> I don't want anybody to tell me about prosperity unless I can see that they are demonstrating it. And I'm glad to be in a place tonight where the minister and those who apply the principles are prospering. I love to be among prosperous people. I was born in the Deep South. I've experienced some of every kind of poverty that you can name, and I'll tell you, it ain't so good. <laughs> and I looked around, and I made my choice. The song says, oh, happy day. <laughs> <laughs> that fixed my choice. When I went to high school and looked through the lunchroom window and didn't have seven cents to go in, I made a choice. I said, no, this ain't the way it's going to be. When I came to New York City to go to school, theological cemetery, I mean seminary, <laughs> and I'd have to peel off my jackets at the end of class to get dimes to go back and forth to class by subway. I'd peel off my jackets and pond them. When it was time for me to go back south in the summer to my mother, I'd go back half naked with all of my clothes in the pawn shop that they would pawn for two dollars each. And believe you me, I made my choice. And the words 
of the 23rd Psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, rang in my soul, and I made a vow to the Lord. I said, Lord, either this is the truth and I'm going to live by it. If it's not the truth, I'm just going to forget the whole thing. And I made a new commitment to God and a new commitment to the idea that the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. And it works. Now I have a few minutes to get to the former lesson sheet. I just got so happy listening to the choir and my fabulous sister. You know, it's good to have a sister like this. It's good to have a minister like this. And I'll tell you, Dr. Coleman, it's great to have a congregation like this. <laughs> this is a turned-on congregation. And every time I come here, it helps to improve my prosperity consciousness. And that's why I'm here tonight. The formal subject is the beauty of prosperity. And today just happens to be Ash Wednesday. And somebody asked me, last week well are we going to, are you going to give out ashes <laughs> on ash wednesday and it reminded me of my days in the chaplain service in the united states air force on ash wednesday the phone rang off the hook and the question was have you got any ashes <laughs> ring, ring, ring. have you got any ashes have you got any ashes everybody wanted ashes <laughs> And they asked me again last week in public, certain people, are you going to give out ashes? And I said, no, I'm not going to give out any ashes. <laughs> and I have a verse of scripture printed on the lesson sheet that I brought from New York with you to show you why I'm not going to give out ashes. And so since Dr. Coleman has given me about the next 20 minutes, I'm going to preach a bit, stand for the reading of the text. And we're going to read this verse of scripture. And this is why, as I say, I don't give out ashes. Isaiah, the 61st chapter and the third verse, I'm going to read and I'm going to ask you to thunder it back at me as I shall pause. You will find that I depart quite regularly from the homiletics and the hermeneutics that they taught me at the theological cemetery, I mean seminary. <laughs> Because I'm not trying to impress upon you my theological and homiletical expertise, whatever that is. I'm trying to impress you with some good ideas, some God ideas, some prosperity ideas. And repetition is, of course, one of the techniques of learning. And we have to learn these principles, as Dr. Coleman would say, by repetition. We have to learn health, happiness, love, success, prosperity and abundance by repetition. You know why? People have learned poverty by repetition. <laughs> People have learned sickness by repetition. People have learned all of their negatives by repetition. And the world is constantly repeating negatives to us. If you're black, they tell you you're underprivileged. You're culturally deprived. They tell you all of those things and they repeat those things to you on television, on radio, in newspaper, and even at school, God help. In one of my recent classes in New York, I said, how long did it take you, some of you people to learn your negatives? One lady said, all my life. <laughs> and so you see, it's going to take the rest of your time on this planet to unlearn and relearn. And in order to unlearn the negatives that you have already learned and been conditioned to, you are going to have to constantly repeat and have repeated to you these positive truth principles. That's why you need to come to Wednesday night meetings and Monday night and Tuesday night classes. That's why you need to get into every seminar that you possibly can. That's why you need to get into the retreats. That's why you need the tapes and the books. Because I'll tell you, you can slack up on repeating truth principles to yourself if you want to, but the world isn't going to slack up on you with its negatives. The world is not going to slack up on this unemployment jazz, on this scarcity of money jazz. And listen, 
I know you know that you're blessed to be in a church and in a school and in a congregation and to have a minister like this, but you don't know how blessed you are. You don't know how blessed you are to have a church, a school, a minister, a system like this where every day you can have the truth repeated to you. You don't know how blessed you are even though you appreciate it. I listened to the choir before coming in in your pastor's office. The choir sings it. The musicians play it. Everything that's done here from the pulpit to the door is geared to condition your consciousness for the good that Jesus Christ came to make you aware of. And Jesus did say, I have come that you might have life. <laughs> and that more abundantly. Not just to live or merely survive, but that you might have life more abundantly. So I'm going to be repetitious and redundant purposely.